In the last few modules, we investigated the distribution of sample means and its relationship to the logic of hypothesis testing. Together, these ideas led us to the z-test, one particular type of hypothesis test when we have a single sample design. Now in practice, the z-test is rarely used. Notice that the z-test statistic requires that we know a considerable amount of information about the population before we treat it. Specifically, we need to know the population mean before treatment, and we have to know the population variance or standard deviation before treatment. In most science, we don't know these two quantities, so we need a more general type of hypothesis test that will work for regular science. So going forward, let me add to our little diagram of all the different tests we'll cover, mu and sigma next to the z-test. Those are what we need to know in order to perform that type of hypothesis test. In this module, we'll considerably expand our repertoire of tests by tackling the t-test, which in a single sample design will not require that we need to know the population variance or standard deviation. It turns out, by learning the t-test, we'll actually be able to tackle several more types of designs, specifically pre- and post-designs, which will also use a t-test, and finally, two-group designs, where we have independent groups that we've treated differently. This will also use a t-test. So let's see what we have to change in order to use this different type of test statistic. So our z-test statistic needed to know the population variance or standard deviation before we can carry out the actual test. This was because we needed to calculate the true standard error, that is, the true standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample means. That was the thing that let us know where our sample mean was relative to all the sample means we could obtain if the null hypothesis was true. So, what we're going to do in order to not have to know the population standard deviation or variance is we'll use our sample estimate. Remember, we have an unbiased estimator of the population variance, S squared. This is the estimator that uses n minus 1 in the denominator. So notice that if we substitute S squared for all the places that we used sigma squared, we won't be calculating the true standard error. Now notice the true standard error is out there, there is some true standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample means. But if we substitute our sample estimate for the population variance, we won't be calculating that value. Instead, we'll be calculating an estimated standard error, or an S sub X bar. Notice that our symbols reflect the fact that we're not calculating a true parameter. So we use the Roman characters to indicate that we're only making an estimate of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample means. So notice how this will work. Here is our true standard error calculation, either sigma divided by the square root of n, or the square root of sigma squared over n, and our estimated standard error will simply substitute s for all the places we previously used sigma, or s squared for the places we used sigma squared. Notice that if we do this, we will not be calculating a z-test statistic, that is, in the denominator of our test statistic, we will not have the true standard error. Instead, we'll have that s sub x bar. If we do this, the distribution of our test statistic will no longer be z. It will no longer be unit normal. Instead, it will follow a special distribution known as the t distribution. But everything else looks the same, you'll notice. Our t sub x bar, that is, the value of t for our particular sample mean, is simply our sample mean minus the population mean we expect, if the null hypothesis is true, divided by the estimated standard error. Now this t-test still requires that we know the population mean before treatment. We'll quickly get rid of that need once we change around our t-test. But for now, notice the critical difference between a t-test and a z-test is that in a t-statistic, we're estimating the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample means. That is, we're using s sub x bar, not sigma sub x bar.